The Architectural Association of Kenya held a CPD seminar themed Design for Healthcare at the Swiss International Hotel on 26 July 2017. The breakfast CPD seminar sought to enlighten professionals in the natural and built environment on the need for proper design of healthcare facilities. Focusing on sustainable hospital designs for developing countries, the CPD attracted professionals in the building and construction industry from across the country. The president of the Architectural Association of Kenya, architect Emma Miloyo, highlighted the agenda of the association in this regard. As we go towards election, I think uh, we felt as uh, AK we have decided to be proactive this year. As a leadership, we felt that we must be proactive and again, as I have said, changing the narrative about uh, built environment. And uh, we felt that three things we should focus on. Visibility, and I think you've seen that. AK is being seen more in terms of print media, social media, um, and the traditional, um, other traditional forms of media. So we're keen uh, on visibility. Why is visibility of AK important? If we're visible, then the professions are also visible. You're not, a, you're not, we're not allowed to advertise, but if AK is able to put all our professions on a platform, then it benefits all members. Value addition for members. Why are you an AK member? I mean, we are very keen on adding value for you through the events that we do, which uh, build your, in terms of professional development, but also in certain initiatives, um, like uh, recently we, we decided to engage more actively with the county governments and said, listen, we can be a voice for our professionals on the county government technical committees. Architect Caleb Mutali, the design consultant of Aga Khan University Hospital, explained the salutogenic factors in the creation of healing environment and its relations to architecture. He insisted that designs should consider the user's comfort and general well-being. Being healthy has everything to do with the environment. One of the environments you're talking about is the built environment. So as you're designing, you are aware that the environment you're going to create has the potential of making people sick, disease, or making the people well, health is. You're conscious of that attitude before you start pushing pencil in your first sketch. You also are aware that you can work and have ecological architecture uh, that is going to restore the environment. So your landscape architects are people you are going to have a proper handle on if you're the lead consultant. Because there's an environment you are seeking to create. They shall not come and sprinkle some flowers in your design. Every plantation will be a deliberate introduction in the design. It's a decision not by a doctor, by architects. They're saying it's good to have artificial lighting, that like we have this particular room, but you be aware that salutogenesis requires you to increase the salutary within this room. Are you able to open up and bring in natural light? Because everybody here is wired to the planet. 24 hours, you start feeling a drug within your body. Architect Robinson Mangoro, the project manager and health design expert at the Kenyatta National Hospital, spoke on overcoming barriers to effective sustainable hospital design in Kenya with a case study of design interventions ongoing at the Kenyatta National Hospital. We want to encourage an approach in the hospital environment whereby when you walk in, you actually ask yourself whether you've walked into a hospital. So that in itself, and that can only be enhanced by creating a natural environment. So that when you walk to the hospital, you don't feel like you come into um, an environment that is going to, um, that has the pathogenic aspect to it, but rather an environment that is uh, the same as what you, where you're coming from. And, in, and it enhances the the healing environment. He also stated the factors that create a natural healing environment. The landscaping and hardscaping uh, must be done intentionally to ensure that you have a healing environment. When the patients have some time or when they are in the wards, they can actually walk into a natural environment and they sit there and the therapeutic um, feeling that you get when you walk into a natural environment is actually enhanced uh, by that particular uh, landscape that you're doing. Um, the other thing is the orientation of the building. Uh, I think this is a concept that we know very well as architects who are trained in the 20th and 21st century. What uh, the research has also stated is that when a patient is in the wards and you give them rooms that almost start to mimic the hotel rooms, they 
get to recover uh, much more uh, quicker than it would happen if they're in an environment that is a typical hospital environment. And this has been done with uh, test controls where patients have been placed in such uh, kind of conditions and they've been studied with the same diseases. Uh, and it was found out that um, when you put a patient in a homely and relaxed environment, then you are able to, to enhance the healing. And lastly, pedestrianization, where you want only necessary motorized um, form of, uh, form of um, traffic to get into the hospital. And majorly, we are talking about the emergency um, and also for the disabled. Everyone else should be encouraged to use pedestrian routes so that you actually encourage the interaction with nature. And as encouraging the interaction with nature, you're promoting the healthy lifestyle. Build Design Magazine was the official media partner.